join kids hat family tia today i am very happy i met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class so i told him the story of the pied piper of hamelin and he soon understood the lesson really tofu i haven't heard this one i would love to hear it from you the pied piper of hamelin once upon a time There was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of rats. There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and color. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, A strange looking man came to the town. He was dressed in the traditional dress but all red in color with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, "Ah, I have a solution for your problem. I assure you that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want 10 gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon the strange looking man took out a pied piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town So many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper, who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats, mesmerized by his tune, fell into the river and drowned. 
There were rejoices in the town. Celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shun him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favor, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. This time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags. I don't trust you any longer. I want my prize money beforehand. Soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again. The children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried. Watching this, the authorities said, We surely have learned a lesson. This man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic. All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night, the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It still said that in the town of Hamelin, if you ever go and listen carefully, you might hear the beautiful sound of the Pied Piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. <laughs> the boy 
boys in my class are very mean to me. They are so tall and big that I always have to listen to whatever they say. I am afraid to disagree with them. Size has nothing to do with courage, Tofu. You don't have to be afraid just because you are short. Have you heard the story of Peter Pan? Peter Pan Once upon a time, in London, the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children Wendy, John and Michael at home. After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed, she went to read a book. She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying? My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me. Don't worry. Come inside. Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there with my fairy Tinkerbell. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Let me wake up John and Michael too. Could you teach us how to fly? Yes, of course. Get them. We will all fly together. And so it was. Five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards Neverland. As they flew over the island, Peter Pan told the children more about his homeland. That island is Neverland. All the children who get lost come and stay with Tinkerbell and me. The Indians also live in Neverland. The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island. And a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone. Captain Hook? Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles. And rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John and Michael, Peter Pan led them in through a small opening in a tree. Inside the tree was a large room with children inside it. Some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, 
Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone. This is Wendy, John and Michael. They will be staying with us from now on. Hello Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. <laughs> One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there or else I will throw each one of you into the water! The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge. That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly. The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch On to the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up. He swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. 
quickly he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea, where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said, he never wanted to grow up, so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime, Peter Pan. I will, Wendy. Promise. And he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Cutia, I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. Homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. You should get up and do your homework first. My hand has been hurting since morning. I am giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. So 
tofu let me tell you a story in a land far away lived a hard working and kind trader Mostly he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other. Here, let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on, horse. Start walking. Cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, "Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope master is not watching." When the master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here.
the trader got really confused. As the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day so that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, 
I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. Bored. Will you please stop reading and talk to me? Bored? How can you get bored, Tofu? Why don't you write a story of your own? Uh, I can't think up a story, Tia, especially when I am so bored. Looks like you haven't heard of Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. One sunny day, Alice was sitting next to her sister while she was reading. Her sister had been reading books all morning and Alice was very bored now. She thought for a while and decided to ask her sister to stop reading. She was about to do that when she saw a little white rabbit with pink eyes run past her. I am late! I have to hurry! I am late! Saying so, he ran into his rabbit hole. Alice was suddenly interested in this turn of events and she decided to follow the rabbit. She went to his rabbit hole and peered down it. Suddenly, the hole gave away and Alice fell into it. She kept falling for what seemed like a very long time. Will I ever stop falling? What kind of a strange hole is this? At last, she landed with a thud in a big empty room. The room had three doors of different sizes. She saw the rabbit outside the smallest door before it closed shut. But the door was very tiny. No bigger than Alice's new pencil back home. get on the other side of that door. But how will I do that? It is so small. Then Alice noticed a small table in the corner of the room. She went to it to find a small bottle of pink potion with the label Drink Me on it. Next to it was a small little key. The size of the smallest door's lock. I think this key belongs to that door. I wonder what this potion will do to me. Uh, let me try. And so Alice took the key in one hand and drank the potion from the bottle. Suddenly, Alice could no longer see the top of the table. The empty bottle of the pink potion became too heavy for her and fell out of her hand. She was shrinking. What is happening to me? I am shrinking. Once Alice was small enough to go through the smallest door, the shrinking stopped. Alice quickly ran to the door, opened it and ran out. She found herself in the most beautiful garden she had ever seen.
but she could not enjoy it because she was so tiny and all the flowers and plants were so big. Oh, I wish I was bigger. Hearing her, the white rabbit came to her and ordered her rather rudely. Go to my house and get my gloves and fan. Alice didn't know why the rabbit was so rude to her. Perhaps he didn't like being followed. Nevertheless, she decided to follow the instructions because she was curious and wanted to see the rabbit's house. When she entered the rabbit's home, she saw a yummy looking cake on the kitchen top. It had a sticker on its plate that said, Eat me. Alice was really hungry by now. She'd even missed lunch, so she decided to eat the cake. As soon as she took one bite, she started growing again. Soon, she would not fit into the house. She could not see the rabbit's gloves anywhere, but grabbed his fan and decided to run out of the house. As soon as she came out, she started shrinking again. Oh no! What is this? Will I ever be back to my normal size again? One of my mushrooms makes you grow tall and the other side makes you shrink. Alice turned to see who was talking to her. It was a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom. She quickly ate a piece from the side he was pointing and came back to her normal size. She thanked him for his help and asked, How do I get back home? Could you please tell me that? That path leads to the Mad Hatter and the other one to the rabbit's home. This time it was a cat that sat in the tree that spoke. Alice thanked him and took the path to the Mad Hatter. She didn't want to meet the rude rabbit again. I will meet you in the evening at the Queen's Palace. Halt! To go further, you must answer my question correctly. Oh, I love riddles. Please do ask me a question. Tell me, why is a raven like a writing desk? Alice thought for a while, but she did not know the answer to the riddle. Oh, I don't know the answer to your question. Could you tell me why? The Mad Hatter was taken aback. Never had anyone asked him the answer to his own riddle. Oh well, I don't know either. We don't know anything here. You can go ahead on the path. Hence Alice proceeded to the Queen's castle where a game of croquet was on. The Queen was very unkind and unreasonable. If she didn't like someone, she would instruct her soldiers to be off with his or her heads immediately. 
her guards had made a mistake earlier in the day and so she had turned them into cards for the game when the queen saw alice she instructed her to play with her you will play croquet with me and if i lose it will be off with the head for you yes your majesty alice was very careful but the queen was terrible at the game and alice had to try really hard to lose ha you lost if i like I will have your head for it. A trumpet sounded far off and the white rabbit hopped forward. The royal court is now in session and you will be tried. Tried? For what? I haven't even done anything. You have been accused of stealing heart-shaped tarts from the queen's kitchen. First, you don't know how to play croquet. and then you dare steal tarts from my kitchen you should be punished off with her head this is silly i haven't even stolen anything i just reached the castle and started playing with the queen she looked at the white rabbit the mad hatter the caterpillar and the cheshire cat they were all looking at her and smiling What is going on? Alice felt someone tapping her arm. It was her sister. Wake up, Alice. You fell asleep sitting next to me. It's time for lunch. What a strange dream I had. I promise I will never complain of being bored while you read. That is such a strange story, dear. Next time you sit to read, I too will write my own story instead of getting bored. Okay, but I have to be the first one you tell it to. Okay, Tofu? Yes. Tia, I think we will take long to reach. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not, Tofu? Let me tell you a story about a princess and a bad fairy. Sleeping Beauty. A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long long wait their wish came true A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen The king announced to his people We are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine Hooray said the people
As the baby girl turned one, celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies. Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. The baby princess looked lovely. All fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl. Suddenly, the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything. As soon as the blue smoke settled, King and Queen were shocked to see the Black Fairy. She saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast, including all fairies. She became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess. On your 16th birthday, before the sun sets, you'll prick on a spindle and die. She screamed in anger and vanished. Everybody was shocked. Suddenly, a young fairy who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess said I can't take away the black fairy's curse but I'll definitely try to help when the princess pricks herself she won't die instead she'll go into a deep sleep and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her. After this, the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom. Soon, there were no sharp things in the castle. Except for one, they didn't check in the tower. As years passed by, the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl. When she turned 16, while roaming in the castle one day, she saw a magical light ball. and followed the light ball. Which took her to the top of the tower in the castle. Inside, there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel. Come here. You must try spinning this wheel. Oh, what is this? Please let me do it as well. I have never tried this. But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Blackberry's curse had come true. Old woman 
who was actually the black fairy laughed and laughed and then disappeared the king who remembered the words of the last fairy made her daughter the princess to lie in a room for many years to come fairy saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful they all said at once sleeping beauty soon this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention princess as the sleeping beauty the whole kingdom was sad fairies noticed this and decided let the whole kingdom fall asleep so when the princess wakes up by her prince she wouldn't be alone everyone in the kingdom fell asleep the king the queen the servants soldiers everyone in town fell asleep even all the animals fell asleep everything in the kingdom stopped soon a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it About hundreds of years later a handsome prince was riding through the forest He saw the strange looking castle The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the sleeping beauty He had heard stories of sleeping beauty and started to explore it He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping When he entered more he saw even the king and queen were sleeping He looked around and saw one big pink door He tried to open the door but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years After trying hard he managed to open the door and to his surprise he found sleeping beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room The moment he saw her he just fell in love with her I really want to know who this beautiful girl is she looks so so gentle and peaceful he said he leaned down and kissed her instantly the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up the king queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after Wow it means No matter if bad people think bad for you there are always some well wishers to help you out
for your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.